Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Wants. I'm going to be teaching you today about complex sentences. So we're gonna get started right away. So why do we wanna know about complex sentences? Well, we want to evolve our sentences towards complexity. So just like when you were um, very, very young and you only knew 100 words, you didn't stop there, you kept learning words and uh, can communicate more complex ideas and that's what we wanna do with our writing as well. So we've already learned about simple sentences such as Scout eats peanut butter, she doesn't leave a drop. And we've learned about compound sentences where you can put those two together using a conjunction. Scout eats peanut butter and she doesn't leave a drop. That's called a compound sentence. And today we're gonna to be looking at complex sentences such as whenever Scout eats peanut butter, she doesn't leave a drop. So what is a complex sentence? Basically, you're looking at a dependent clause joined with an independent clause. So for this lesson, the dependent clauses will be in blue and the independent clauses will be in red. We know from our last lesson that an independent clause is just like a simple sentence. Basically, it's independent. It can stand by itself. A dependent clause is very similar, but it cannot stand alone because while it is a group of words with a subject and a verb, it does not have a complete thought to it. And you'll see this very clearly in a minute when I show you. So a dependent clause is incomplete, therefore it cannot stand alone. An independent clause is complete. If you put them together, it counts as a complete sentence. So let's take, let's take a look and build one. So we've got two simple sentences here. And all I did was I left the red one the same and I put when in front of the blue one to turn it into a dependent clause. So listen to how this sounds. When Scout eats peanut butter, you can tell that is not a complete thought anymore. Just by popping that word when in front of it, it makes it incomplete. So let's go ahead and put those together. When Scout eats peanut butter, she doesn't leave a drop. Notice where the comma goes, right between the blue and the red. So when you put those two sentences together, you need a comma because you're showing that they're joined now, okay? So the when, that I will be using um, purple for these kinds of words is called a subordinate conjunction. So to indicate uh, time, you've got after, while, when, before, since, until, as soon as. To indicate cause and effect, you've got because, whether, now that, and if. And to contrast, you've got although, even though, and whenever. So let's take a look at using a few of these um, so I can show you some examples. First example, if Scout eats peanut butter, she becomes a little sleepy. So if is the subordinate conjunction and there's a dependent clause and an independent clause. The independent one could stand by itself. She becomes a little sleepy. That could be a sentence. The dependent clause cannot stand by itself. If Scout eats peanut butter, you can tell that that's not a complete thought. It can't be by itself, but together with a comma, it's fine. Let's look at another one. Until Scout eats peanut butter, she's not a happy corgi. Again, the sub subordinate conjunction in purple is indicating that you have a complex sentence. You're starting with that. Because Scout eats peanut butter, her fur is thick and shiny. So there's another one. So recognizing where to place the comma is probably, um, it's not that hard, but it, some middle school students I've noticed, they, they either forget the comma or they maybe put it in the wrong place or it's kind of, um, it's kind of a mystery. So let's take a look at, at exactly where it goes. So with your two simple sentences, obviously you don't need a comma. You've got the two periods that end the sentences, no problem. So now that we're gonna turn one of them into a dependent clause, because Scout and Barney like cheese, we often run out of it ourselves. 
we've got a, a dependent clause joined together with an independent clause, and we need a comma in there. So where is it going to go? Right there. Right after you replace that period, and then you see going down the yellow arrow, that's where your comma goes. So just replace the period with a comma if you're making a complex sentence out of two sentences. So three steps to a complex sentence. Take two independent, uh, in, independent simple sentences that would go really well together. Okay, makes sense. Grapes and raisins are poisonous to dogs. We never buy them at the store. Decide which coordinate conjunction you want to put in front of there from that list. Because grapes and raisins are poisonous to dogs, we never buy them at the store. And no, you got now you got to put your comma in. And it goes right where the period would be if you kept the two sentences separated. Okay, so hopefully you have that now. So let's do, um, can you recognize a complex sentence? This time I'm only going to give you four attempts, so see if you can get them all correct. And you can pause your video and um, then you'll hear the answer right after. Since peanut butter is good and healthy, that is not a complex sentence. It is not a complete thought. It doesn't have an independent clause joined with it. And so it's just basically what we call a fragment. Number two, because peanut butter and jelly go well together, people make sandwiches out of these ingredients. That is a complex sentence. You can see it has all the parts and a comma perfectly well placed. Number three, now that peanuts are widely grown and they are inexpensive, That is not a complex sentence. It's trying to be one, but unfortunately, because somebody left the and in there, it doesn't make any sense. You've got to take that and out. You can either have a compound or a complex, but that's not the way you make it. So you got to take the and out. Number four, although peanuts are not harmful to dogs or cats, they are grown primarily for humans. That is a complex sentence. It has all the parts, dependent, independent, comma, and a, cord, a subordinate conjunction in the front. All right, last word, what about punctuation? Yes, you can use a period, obviously, in a complex sentence. You may also use a question mark, and you may use an exclamation mark if you're showing something that is exciting or has a lot of emotion in it and or is a sudden um, a sudden thought all right that's it we're done um, you can go on to your practice and feedback great job i will scout and i will both see you next time